So, um, if you look at what I'm looking at up here, okay, and really, to be honest, I'm seeing nothing up here, but I'm, I have it in editing and whatnot, the photo of what you need to see so that you can understand exactly what I'm talking about. It looks like a bar graph, but I'm not necessarily trying to give you numbers and things like that. I'm trying to provide for you information. 60 to 76 percent of the people that's out there right now will never reach the road of mastery. They're either too uh, they, they have too much heart and passion for the wrong thing, okay? Instead of having heart and passion to, to help feed humanity, no matter who they are, where they are, where they come from, whatever, they have a heart and passion for prejudice, violence, and things like that. Um, and let's take the word of uh, passion. Passion can be mentally, you can have a mental passion, you can think, you can focus on something so hard and so crucial that it becomes a part of your main drive of life. Um, and you can do this without your heart. Um, case in point, if you have someone that wants to shoot somebody, a lot of times, nine times out of 10, the person that wants to shoot that person for whatever reason really doesn't have the heart to. They really don't want to do it in their heart. They know it's wrong. They feel the emotion of it being wrong, but mentally they got to do what they got to do. So then you have a physical passion. This is action, okay? And then you have the spiritual, right, and the spiritual passion, a lot of times is going to go against all those others. However, if, if used the right way and understanding what I'm saying or whatever, the spirit can actually be all in into whatever you're trying to do. Um, as you looked at this chart, you see chart, you see line two, okay? Line two is all out of order. You see there's more heart than spirit. You see spirit is more than mental and physical. You know, however I got it presented here, you see these differences. And most people are like this. They're very erratic. They have no true foundation of premise. Um, these are the pe these are people that, let's say, they know they're supposed to be on a diet, and their heart says, "I really want some cookie dough ice cream." Okay, chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream. Some of y'all are just like, mmm, right? And you know mentally, in the back of your mind, in your state of consciousness, you're hearing the voice of your doctor appear saying you need to avoid uh, certain foods because you need to get on this diet or else you're going to be diabetic or you're going to have heart disease or whatever the case may be, or you're clogging the colon, something, okay? And you're now at a fight with yourself. You're staring at the ice cream. You know you shouldn't have it, but you're, you're feeling it. You're feeling it, you know? The spirit, he then kind of knocks the middle a couple of inches up and gets that voice resonating, you should not have this. And then you physically take it anyway. Because sometimes the heart will control the physical. 
not necessarily the mental controlling the physical. It doesn't, it's starting to make sense with you. You're starting to understand it now. So these are those people right there. It's not saying you're a bad person. What it's saying is you have no power of will over yourself. Now, this can change. Where the subject can be first cookie dough ice cream, the next bill could be who you decide to uh, be with as far as relationships, whether it be uh, a moment in time or whether it's a long term, short term, whatever the case may be, that those bars start fluctuating and they can change. So this is, like I said, it's not saying you're a bad person. A lot of times it depends on the subject matter and who you are as a person. There are times of weakness where those bars can scale off and the next thing you know, you're waking up to some dude you would have never touched in the first place. Or you're waking up to some chick that you never would have touched in the first place. So realize that that's just true. So take it from that point and then take it up to number one. Number one is more powerful than number two. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you something about myself, okay? I personally was a number two. I worked on the number two level. I was always erratic, and even today, sometimes I can be very erratic. However, the majority of time in my life, I'm at number one. I'm at number one. Number one is the rope. I don't know if y'all seen this. There was a movie called Three Ninjas. Okay. Um, in that movie, the grandpa is telling them all, including him, four strands to rope. He's there's a connection. There there is a bond between the three brothers and the grandfather, and they they're learning the art of ninjutsu from their grandfather, who happens to be traditionally from Japan. So. Granted, that year, everybody wants to be a ninja. You know, every time a ninja movie comes out, somebody wants to be a ninja. They don't even put in the work. It's just like, just like this one time I saw this guy, he had a Goku outfit, you know, the orange outfit. I'm like, these dudes always like Dragon Ball Z and won't walk into a martial arts school one time. You know, it's very disturbing sometimes. Anyway, that's not the point. So the main point of this is, look at what's at number one. The physical is equal to the spiritual, is equal to the heart, the emotion is equal to the mental. Okay, so let me give you an understanding of what number one means. We are all at some point thinking evil and thinking good. So whether it be that, let's give a let's give a good example. If I had decided that I was going to rob a bank, do you hear what I'm saying? Or rob a person, or let's say I I, I was going to donate to charity. Let's say I was going to, uh, uh, my, I have my martial arts school, so I'm going to create a plaque and give it to a police officer for doing a great job in the community for which I have my martial arts school. On number one, you will see that there's no splits in me. What do I mean by splits? If you look at number two again, there's a constant fight in between each of the four temples of you. 
all right, the four U's, the four, th this kind of uh, idea, right? And number one, there's no split. My heart, my, my mental, my spiritual, and my physical all agree that, that, that whatever I'm about to do is going to be done point blank period. Does that make sense? So now the question has to be, what do you do? So erase that. What do you do? Let me tell you what I do. Every time I make a decision, okay, let's be honest, not every time. I'm human. I'm not trying to say I'm perfect. I never will say that. But in but every time I make a choice, or any time I made a choice, the majority of times I ask myself, am I truly going to do this? That's the first question. Second question, is everybody in agreement that I'm going to do this? That's the physically, that's the spiritual, that's the emotional, and that's the mental. I do this with money. I do this about where I'm going to go the next day. When I remade the new schedule of my martial arts school, the next question was, am I going to live up to this point? Um, am I going to keep to a certain standard if I start exercising? No matter what question it is, you have to ask yourself the question. And then you have to ask yourself truthfully, Sit down with yourself and say, are you going to live up to this in all areas of your life? If not, maybe you don't need to do it. Maybe you don't need to go that route. See, this is real martial arts right here. This is the, this is the mental martial art. Now, why is this so important with martial arts and what I'm talking about? Let me give you a great example. In Wing Chun Kung Fu, for what I teach, and I, and I allow this idea to slip into some show, which is my uh, Chinese, Chinese kickboxing, but in our school, we call it hybrid kickboxing because people don't understand the word Sancho. Uh, and then my MMA class, which I haven't, it's not built up, but it's going, it, I'm working on it, okay? Um, in Wing Chun, it talks about hitting with intent. Intent is short for the word intentions. Intentions, nine times out of ten, applies to thinking. But when you talk about thinking, it has sometimes thinking has nothing to do with what you do up here. And a lot of times, sometimes it has to do right here. There's another Wing Chun rule that says punch from the heart. Okay, so we punch from the heart, but you don't understand that the truth is it might not just mean punch from the heart because there's a sternum there and they crack it open to get to the heart to perform surgery, so then you punch out because it's talking about center line. Half the times it has everything to do with how the heart thinks. And you and you want to hit you want to think with this intent and you want to think with this intent. If you don't have your spirit and your heart and your mind and your physical in equal, and you try to defend yourself against someone who will rape you, someone who will attack you because they're a bully, someone who will steal your money. Someone who will come into your home and try to do anything to your kids or your family. Someone who will, who will burn you in the house. If you're not fully equal, you will lose.